All right, Ronnie. Ronnie, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Okay. Uh, I was born in New York. I was born in New York, and uh, it was me and my brother, my father and my mother. We lived in the projects, Queensbridge projects, up until I was eight. My brother was nine. My brother, me, my brother, some of my friend, and some of my friends, we we used to uh, like to get in a lot of mischief, and we used to at a park called River Park, right by the, on the East River. We used to go and just go all over the park, but we went in a section where we wasn't supposed to go, and my brother slipped on some wood and he fell. He fell into the East River and he drowned. And I had to go tell my mother, you know, my, my brother fell in the river, it's just, he did, he, he's, he's gone, you know? And they didn't find his body for maybe, maybe a week and a half. His body had got sucked into some of the, like filters, that the uh, Con Edison, the, the electric company in New York, that they had, and, and, and that was just that was a, that was a lot for my for my folks. So we headed out this way to California. So from like eight and a half till now, this is where I've been from from California. So this is really like where I feel I'm from. How would you describe your childhood other than that tragedy? Well, now I'm 55 right now. Looking back, looking back, you know, it was it would it would be considered a, 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 a bad childhood. But like I say, at the time, I didn't know. You know, I I knew, you know what I'm saying. I knew we was broke. I knew we didn't we didn't have no money. You know what I'm saying. My father drank. He, he was a cold alcoholic, so he drank that peppermint schnapps and, you know, and from that, the, the ass whoopings that he used to give me and, and all that, I used to run away a lot. I used to like to run away. To me, running away was fun because nobody could tell me what to do. I was in the streets 24-7. I always hung around older older kids. So, you know, for me, it was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was fun. Even, even when, when I was, I was, I started, they started sending me to McLaren Hall, Juvenile Hall. To me, all that was fun. It was like camp, you know? And, you know, my poor mother, she, it was killing her because, you know, she, she just wanted to know where I was at. You know, she wanted to know I was alive. So I, sometimes I'd be gone. I mean, I'm like 11, 12 years old. I might be gone like two months. Just in the streets, just stealing and just doing all that, you know? So that's how it went for me. That's how I got introduced to gangs. To me, to me, gang, gang members was like the coolest thing going. Like if you wasn't a gang member, then you was missing out on something, you know? So, you know, then when I was 16, I was at, the, I was at the, my mother and father's house and my father, he introduced me to crack cocaine. He had just got a settlement. He had got a, some, he was working for a Western Union, I think it was, delivering uh, telegrams back then when they had telegrams, you know? And some a dog had bit him up. So he sued, whatever, somehow he ended up getting $70,000. He got that money. And this is in this was in '83, Los Angeles. That's when crack cocaine had just it was just now hitting L.A. And 
it got my, my pops in. And through his thinking, you know, through the drugs, whatever, he thought, you know, kicking it with his son, you know, he gave me something. And when, and, and when I took that first hit, it was like the gates of heaven opened up. Like, like for real, like, like harps and birds and all that chirping and like, you know, and, and I, that, that started me on, 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 on that. Crack cocaine and, and, and it had a hold on me for at least 30 years, you know, in and out of prison, in and out of prison, just that was my life, you know. I was, I felt more, I felt more normal around pr people that was in prison, inmates living that institutional life. I felt mo more normal do in doing that than on the streets. Even though I liked the freedom of the streets, I just couldn't, I just couldn't conform to no rules. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing because First of all, I was on the drugs, you know, and and I just I was just a, a, a the type of person that was like anti anything that has to do with rules, you know, and, and that was my thing. I just get out, go right back to uh, smoking, and. That's all I cared about. I had already accepted the fact that I was gonna just die smoking, smoking crack. It didn't bother me because I felt like it's the life that I wanted, you know? Then, you know, now let me, let me, let me, let me just clarify that I know drugs are bad. I know drugs do fucked up things to people, ruin their lives and all that. I know that. And crystal meth is one of those drugs. But to me, right now as I speak, to me, crystal meth is a wonder drug. Because crystal meth got me off crack. Crystal meth, somebody keep, kept telling me, man, just keep smoking crystal, man. I'm telling you, you'll get off crack. Crib. And I didn't believe him because I, I, I hit it once and I was like, man, what the fuck? It don't do nothing. It's like, a, who the hell gonna pay money for this and it tastes nasty and it, and it just don't do nothing. It, it, you, don't, you can't feel it, you know? And then one time I hit it and something dawned on me. It had been like seven, eight, maybe nine hours, and I hadn't even thought of crack cocaine. And it took me a long time to realize what was going on. What it did was crystal meth took the urge. It was that urge of chasing that rock, just wanting to get that next hit, it completely eliminated that from my from my uh, my mental, you know. And man, you know, it's like I still smoke crystal, and like I say, I know some drug is a bad drug, you know, this and that. But you know what? I eat regularly every day. I keep I keep money. I keep a few dollars in my pocket. You know, the few little bills I have, I pay them. You know, I'm not a bullshit person no more. I don't lie every time. Everything that I did was a. I just lied. Just every everything was trickery, deceit. You know, and. It took all that from me. It's, you know, I'm not. I know I'm not perfect right now because I know I, you know, I sell. I sell crystal. I do. You know, I smoke it. I do. You know, I, I buy shit stolen and I buy food stamps from people. I, you know, 
I do I do everything to like, you know, cut corners and shit, but but you know it's like I feel, to me, I feel like I have a life now. I don't go to, I, I went to jail a couple times this year for little little stuff, got right out. You know what I mean? But you, it used to be when I went to jail, I stayed, I stayed locked up at least two years, you know? The last little stunt, the stint I did, when I went, they gave me five. They gave me, no, they gave me seven. Seven years would have. While I was in there, I caught five more years. They caught me with some heroin while I was in prison and they gave me an extra five years for that. Out of that five they gave me, I spent two years in the hole. I was in the shoe for two years. I was in a cell, locked down 23 out of 24 hours, two years. And I did it and when I did that, Believe it or not, I liked it. I, I, the, the whole to me was cool because I didn't have to deal with all that other shit on the main line. I, I didn't have no celly. I was by myself, so I was cool, you know? And, but like I said, if you, I haven't been smoking uh, crack now probably probably four years. You know, and I've done more in this four years than my whole life. Little things. Going into a fast food place and having the money to get, to get what I want. Seeing somewhere that I want to eat, I ain't never seen just go there and eat. You know, uh, I want people money, give people money, give people drugs and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? To me, to me, it's it's a step up from what I was, because I used to be walking around walking around here downtown like stanking. I ain't changed my clothes in Lord knows how long. No shower, no nothing, committing felony after felony just to keep smoking. You know, sleeping on the sidewalk and all that. Did you have kids? I don't have no kids. No kids? I don't have no kids. You know, my parents passed. I have two sisters and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't even keep in contact because they really don't even know me. When they came up, I was always in jail or away. I never, I never came around. I always said I would, said I would come around for Christmas, whatever, I didn't show up, you know? When I was in the hole, like I said, I did two years in the hole. While I was in the hole, my father died while I was in the hole, you know? And, you know, it really, really, I got, my family really is the few people that I, that I have out here on the streets. It's just, to me, it's like more family to me than anything. You know, and being out here on these streets, I could say, I could say, yeah, it's rough, it's tough, but you know, when you've been out here for so long and you know so many people that's out here, it's just what we do. It's just, it's a survival thing, you know, and you, you, you walk around here daily. You play in defense. You're trying to stop something from happening, something bad, because there's so many bad things that can happen to you out here. Living this life, dealing with drugs and people that that's on drugs now, people on that fentanyl. You know, you gotta watch yourself, man. You can't, because you never know the person that you're talking crazy to or whatever might just be that person that slipped some of that fentanyl on you and you did because I know so many, I can't even count the people I know that have died from fentanyl overdoses. And for me, the majority, I know for a fact didn't use fentanyl. You know, it's the perfect 
weapon for a female. Perfect. Perfect weapon because you could be sleeping there just dripping down your earlobe, down your ear, your eardrum, and you're you, you just not going to wake up. You know, it can put it in your food, whatever. It don't matter. You're just not going to wake up. You're going to be dead. And right here downtown Los Angeles, if you're dead and when the, and when the authorities show up, they can tell if it's an overdose. Trust me, they don't give a fuck. Ain't no, there's not gonna be no investigation. It's gonna, not gonna be nothing. You're just gonna be bagged and tagged and you're gonna be another John Doe. It's simple as that. I've seen it many times, you know? And you gotta deal with, down here, you gotta deal with a lot of stealing. A lot of people down here are thieves. They're, 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 they're uh, thieves of opportunity. If they see something that they can get and they can get away with, they're gonna do it, you know? And for me, it almost drove me crazy because they was stealing from me so much when I was living in the, in the tent, when I was in my tent, they were stealing from me so much, man, I couldn't catch them. I couldn't get, man, I just wanted to catch someone stealing my shit so I could make it that example, you know? And, and one day, man, you know what I'm saying? I caught that person. Someone I know, he, 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 was, he was in my shit, man. He was stealing my shit. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm like, damn, man, what the fuck, man? What are you, when I, I said, look, man, what, what are you doing, man? You in my, sh what, what's up, man? He looked at me, he looked at me with old crazy look on his face and he, he was like, man, man, just chill out, man. Man, I'm gonna take care of me. I'm gonna take care of you, man, you know that. And look, down here, man, if someone it's taking your shit and stealing your shit and, and right there in your face and you allow it, you might as well just go on and just every time you have something, give it to somebody because trust me, it's going to be somebody at your door waiting to, to take whatever you got. So, you know, hey, I wasn't about to, <laughs> he, I wasn't about to let nobody get away with doing that to me, man, you know? So I ain't even gonna say what, what, what I did, but tr trust me, I handled my business. Trust me, I handled my business, you know what I'm saying? Because that's out, you know? And he ain't dead, but you know what? He ain't about to fuck with my shit no more. That's what I do know, you know? That's what I do know. and. I done seen him a few times after that, after that little incident. And, and when he sees me, uh, he, utmost respect in the way he approaches me and all that for real, <laughs> you know? And, and I hate that it, I hate that you even have to go there like that, you know, because it doesn't change anything. People are still gonna steal your shit, you know? You could do whatever, it, whatever, you could do so many different things to a person, even kill him behind stealing your stuff or whatever. And guess what? First time you leave, somebody gonna be up in your shit, stealing your shit. Because like I say, they, 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 opportunists. If they see that they got, it's actually, they got action of taking something and getting away with it, it's gonna happen. So it's just, man, it's just that you, you gotta just watch people, man, to the point where, oh man, it's just, it, it drains you, man, it drains you, you know? And you know, like I say, I've been in the streets my whole life. And even to this day, people still get over on me. They still, they still get over on me, man, you know? And it's just, it's just. It's a snake pit. Real live snake pit. And they biting hard and they vipers, man, and they coming fast, you know? Uh, 
men, women. I mean, hey, hey, every everybody got their own different moves, and, and man, what's your biggest fear now? My biggest fear. My biggest fear uh, is to be blamed for something I didn't do down here, so, you know, something serious. Because, you know, like I say, I got a, my record as long as Timbuktu. And if, you, if, if I was to get arrested for, you know what I'm saying, like a violent act, it's over with for me, man. It's over with. And, and I know so many people that's in prison as we speak, and they ain't never getting out. They ain't never getting out, you know? Because, hey, a lot of them did whatever they in there for, but you know what? A lot of them didn't. And I'm not just saying a few, I'm saying a lot, you know? And they don't have no hope because that life right there, that's, that's, what's, that's the one for them. They just happen to be born and, and be the, the wrong color and the wrong situation, the wrong, so many wrong things. And hey, it is what it is, you know? If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? The main thing I would have done, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't uh, put so much emphasis on what other people think. Wanting people to like me, you know? Not wanting, uh, people, people, not wanting people to uh, think I was cool. I wanted to be one of the cool dudes, you know? And, 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 and caring so much and putting so much emphasis on what other people think uh, just led me to all the wrong people, you know? Of course, I wouldn't have used drugs, but if I could do it all over, one thing, one of my biggest regrets in life, really, is not graduating from high school, you know? That was one of my biggest regrets. And I just wish I wouldn't have hurt my mother so much. Poor woman, I, I just tore her, I just, I didn't know though, I didn't, it's, it's not that, I was just sterile to it. You know, I was like, oh, she gonna be all right. She gonna, but I, you know, you know, she spent so much time just, just worrying about me, just wondering what can she do to make it, make me, you know, into a decent person, you know? But uh, I let her down all the way up to the day she died, you know? I wish I could take that back. That's that's the one that that like at nighttime, when I'm just just thinking it's just me. That's the one that just keeps me up at night, you know. And I did my mother wrong. Straight up, I did. You know, I let her down too many times. You know. You been in love before? Have I been in love before? Um, I think it was love, long, I was young, you know, but I got a quick, I got a quick lesson in, in life. Quick lesson in life when I went to jail, when I went to prison, I got a quick lesson in life is that uh, what you think is yours, nah, it's not always yours, it's not, you know. You gotta listen to that to, the, to your partner and listen to what she's saying, you know. And she, and while I was in prison, she told me that you know, she told me because all I, she I told I didn't care about anything. All I wanted to do don't get that pussy up. That's all I cared about. And she sending me packages, write me letters, and ever answer my phone calls and all that. I didn't care about none of that. Just don't get that pussy over. So I'm on her so tough about that till she just, one day she just told me, she said, fuck it, man, you wanna know? Do you really wanna know? I said, yeah, I wanna know. She said, yeah, I've been doing something since you've been gone. She said, you don't know him though. 
And man, that hit me like a Mike Tyson right. You know, I couldn't believe she did. Man. So I went through the one thing I learned, I learned with that, it's only one thing that mends a broken heart, and that's time. For some people, it's only this much time. For some people, it's that much time, you know? And just to just, uh, like I said, a broken heart, a broken heart, I had you contemplating murder because I, I wanted to kill her. I, wa I was just thinking about how can I kill her and get away with it? You know what I mean? But like I said, after a while, you just, you, 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 you're mad, like, hella mad in the beginning, but as time goes on, it weans itself off. So I learned that, man. Can't trust no bro, man. <laughs> Can't trust no bro, man, because they so old, man, they so, they some good actors. Men are too, but hey, for me, it's the women, man. You know? They always have a plan. You know? You thinking you just so cool, like she just wants you. Oh, yeah. oh no, you're just part of her plan. You know, so. Ronnie, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? The most important lesson I've learned in my life is you, you, everybody wants things they want, they want, they want this, whether it be money, girls, cars, whatever they, 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 everybody wants, wants things, you know, but one thing I've learned is you can't, you can't get things until you learn how to give. You got to give. You can't just be so, you can't be selfish. You can't, and, you're, and you know, a lot of times your, your, your mind tells you, you might walk past somebody, whatever, and your mind will tell you, man, look, oh, I can give them this, that, but you don't, you just keep walking, you know? You gotta go with your. You gotta go with your first mind. If you if you if you think you can help somebody out, tell somebody something or treat somebody a certain way. If if everybody is just talking about this person, whatever, and you could be that person that just you know that just doesn't do that. Give something. Give. Give, and you're gonna get. You know. Simple as that. You you don't. You don't have to be like everybody else, you know? Really, you don't. You'll sleep better at night, you'll feel better as a person, you know? Be yourself, you know, and, and, and just be, you know, just a genuinely just a, a, a good person. All right, Ronnie, thank you so much for sharing your story. Appreciate it. Very interesting. Thank you.